Hi everyone. In today's lecture, we will look at the different addressing modes of AT51. Before we look at the addressing modes of AT51, let us define or discuss what is a CPU. Now CPU is the brain and the heart of a microcontroller even in the case of AT51. So the CPU is a co collection of combinatorial and sequential circuits. The CPU is told what to do by a sequence of bits. Sequence of bits and this is stored in the program memory. This sequence of bits is called as an instruction and the continuous sequence of instructions is called as a program. Now let us look at one of a simple instructions move a comma r0. So let us see how does it work. This instruction move a comma r0 is stored in a program memory. The program memory is generally always having in a read only memory. So this is your program memory. Now in the program memory basically in this is the address space 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 and in that address space we have stored a number right. So let us understand what is this number. This is a sequence of bits which will tell the AT51 to do something. So here it is a verb right and this verb has a special name called as an opcode. So in an instruction is made up of either one part consisting of just an opcode which is like a verb and also in some cases it may have an operand which is like a noun. So I can give an instruction just say go or an instruction say go home. So in this case go is the verb and home is the noun. So in the same case we have an opcode and an operand. Now in this case we have only one thing that is called as only the opcode. There is no operand over here. Here the opcode is E8 which basically tells the microcontroller to move A R0 to A. So first what will happen is in this memory location from the memory location this is fetched. So this is called as a fetch instruction and it is decoded. When the decoding by the AT51 is done, this data from R0, so R0 register, I will move some data. Let us say I have data R0 move 0, 05. This will be moved to the accumulator. So here this is your source and this is your destination. Right? So basically this is R0 register, it will be moved from the R0 to the accumulator. So how does this program, where does the program run from? That is pointed by the program counter. So the program counter will increment after each instruction. What will happen is when this is getting fetched or this is getting executed, the program counter is automatically incremented and this will be now pointing out to the next instruction to be fetched. So this program counter as it said is a self counting or automatically count itself and it will point to the next address from which an opcode has to be fetched. So now let us look at what are the different type of addressing modes that we have. So here we have a move a comma r0. So this is called as a register addressing because here we have one is this is r0 is a register. 
So as we discussed in the previous lecture, R0 to R7 are special memory which are called as registers, right? So here what you will see is the data is moving from R0 to A. I can write any instruction from move A comma Rn where Rn is N will be standing for 0 to 7. So you can have move A comma R0, move A comma R1, move A comma R2 and so on till move A comma Rn or R7. So I hope you understand the working of an instruction. Now we will look at another instruction. There is something called as an immediate addressing mode. Now let us say I have an instruction where instead of from one register I want to move a value which I have right. So let us take an example of move a comma hash 55. Now what does this hash mean? This hash means that this is a literal data. This is the data that a user is going to give. A user wants to move data 55 to the register A, right? So in this case, how is it stored? So what will happen is this is of two parts. So in the previous case I talked about, we have this is the opcode and this is the operand. So the verb and the noun. So this is the verb and this is the noun. Here what will happen is this will be stored in this format move a the opcode and hash 55 the noun. In the previous case you can see that it only has in verb condition that is move a comma r0 and that is where you can see that that instruction is comparatively faster to this instruction because it it and is smaller because it takes this takes two bytes and the previous one takes only one byte of your opcode right now the program counter starts at 0000, 0, 0, 0. now what happens is this instruction is fetched over here from move a and this will be decoded so the decoder will fetch this instruction to the decoder and it will see that okay i have an instruction which has a verb and also a noun and then it will fetch the second part of the instruction and it will fetch the next part and it will move into the accumulator. So here you will see this move a comma hash 55 and you will see the data it will be passed on to the accumulator after this instruction is fetched. So the program counter after this instruction will go from 0, 0 to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0002. So the program counter will be now pointing to the next instruction that has to be fetched. Now you can have any kind of literal data. So I can move R0 also I can do hash 01 edge. So I can move any kind of data to that. So basically what you will see is that I can move this data 01 and here in this case it will go to the R0 value over here. This hash indicates I am trying to move a immediate data to R0. Let us look at the next instruction. Here we have something called as a direct addressing mode. In a direct addressing mode, let us see an example move a comma 55 h. Okay, so let us look at this instruction move a comma 55 h. Now this is a little bit different compared to the previous instruction. The previous instruction was written as move a comma hash 55 h. Now let us understand the difference between both of them. In this case again we have a verb and a noun that is called as opcode and an operand. So I will have move a and then we will have 55 h. So the same instruction will be there an opcode and a operand. Now try to understand that this move a opcode will be totally different to move a from the previous one. String looks same but the instructions are little bit different. Now what I will do is when the program counter is 0, 0, 0 this will be fetched and put onto the decoder. Now the decoder will fetch this instruction and it will see okay 
I have to take the second byte also. Now the moment it takes the second byte and it decodes, it decodes and it sees that this is not a immediate addressing mode, it's a direct addressing mode. And then what it will do is in the previous case, you must have seen that the accumulator, the value 55 H was going. Now here the memory, so we have the data memory here, we have the data memory the data memory in address 55 H. So there may be some data in 55 H. Let us assume a value a a. This is the address. And this is the value. Now what will happen is the data in 55 H will move on to the accumulator. And here you will see the data a a stored into the accumulator. As you can see in the previous instruction and this instruction, is that in the previous case the data is part of the upcode so here the operand over here is the actual data to be moved to the accumulator while in this case this is the memory address to be specific data memory address from where the data has to be taken and moved on to the accumulator so what will happen basically in these two cases is just look for this symbol hash. The moment you see this hash, it means an immediate addressing mode. And when there is no hash, that means you are taking the data from the data memory address. So this indicates a data memory address over here. Now we will look at the register addressing mode. We have already seen the register addressing mode in the first case of move a comma r0. If you recognize in the previous instructions, two instruction, we used two bytes of instruction. But this kind of instruction has only one part to it and that is just the opcode. So what will happen is move a comma r0 is a one byte instruction. So the previous two examples were a two byte instruction here only one byte is required to write this instruction and what will happen again the program counter is at 000 h it will be decoded by the decoder fetched and decoded and then what will happen is the data. So let us say I have data 0 2 in r0 which will be moved to the accumulator. So in the previous two cases, you will see in register addressing mode in the immediate as well as the direct addressing mode, the data, there is two part of the data. Here you have only one opcode part of the data. And that is why that is two byte instruction. This is called as a one byte instruction. Let us get into a little bit more complicated part of it. We have something called as a indirect addressing mode. Let us take an example move a comma at the rate r0. This is again a one byte instruction. So the whole instruction will be fit into one opcode a comma at the rate r0. 0. Now let us try to understand how it works. Now what will happen is this will be fetched. You must have seen an example of move a comma r0. This both will look the same except for this symbol. This symbol has a great significance because this is kind of like a pointer operation. If you are not really confident with pointers, don't worry, I'll be explaining it over here. Now what will happen is move comma at the rate R0. This is fetched. And then it is decoded. Using a decoder will decode it and then it will get executed. Now let us take an example, the previous example of 0 to H. Now in this case, what will happen is when 0 to H R0 in the previous case, this actual data was moved to accumulator. Now what will happen when you have the instruction say move a comma at the rate R0 is this basically R0 is the address of the data memory. So in this case, 
the data at 0 to h data memory whatever data is there let us say i will have an example of ff just take a random example so in the memory 0 to h of the data memory the data is ff that will be moved into the accumulator when this instruction is executed the data in 0 to h of the the address so what r0 will be holding the address so r0 will be having the address from where data needs to be transferred or moved this data from 0 to h will move on to ffh 0 to h is having the data ffh and it will move to the accumulator now you can have it the other way also so i can write move at the rate r0 comma a the value in a will move to the address 0 to so r0 is holding 0 to right and it will move to 0 to and the data from accumulator will go to the address 0 to h you can use only r0 and r1 only r0 and r1 as indirect pointers you cannot use r2 r3 so this instruction is wrong move at the rate r5 comma a please don't do this you can have only r0 and r1 as indirect pointers so with this we have looked at the different addressing part of it so the first one is immediate addressing mode the second one is the direct addressing mode the third one is the register addressing mode and finally the fourth one is called as the indirect addressing mode so we have gone through all the addressing modes happy learning and goodbye thank you